All right, everybody, one more quick example. This one a little bit more complicated. This is called the hanging sign problem. So we saw the seesaw problem. We'll eventually see the leaning ladder problem. This one is the hanging sign problem. Uh, and it's a great one because it really captures the way that, um, you know, objects really interact in real life. Uh, and it's something we couldn't have solved before without the concept of torque. All right. So what we have is we have a 400 Newton sign hanging from the end of a strut, which is just another name for a rod. And you can see there's a hinge at the leftmost side of the rod right over here. And the strut is four meters long, weighs 600 Newton. So it actually itself has mass and it's supported by a hinge at the wall. And it's also supported by a cable uh, that goes from the end of the, end of the strut to the top of the wall. Now, the dimensions are all given, 3, 4, and 5, uh, so we know that this angle over here, just from doing some math, is going to be 37 degrees if we did our trig out, and uh, that's all we need to know. Now, what we want to find are two things. We want to find the tension in the string, and we want to find the uh, force um, in the hinge on the strut. Now, the force from the hinge on the strut is complicated uh, because it has... Um, it has uh, more than one component to it, right? That hinge is both pushing out like a normal force on the strut, but it's also supporting it upwards. Um, and so when you look at something like this and you're like, I don't really know which way this hinge is pushing on it, I can't picture it. The best thing to do is just to treat it as components from the start. And if you're wrong, you get the direction wrong, your answer will come out negative and tell you that you did it wrong. So let's do all of that. So remember our steps, uh, draw all the forces, Apply Newton's second law, sigma fx, sigma fy equals zero, and then go to torque and use that. And between those three things, you should have enough information. So let's draw the forces first. So um, we have, let's start with the hinge because it's the most unusual. We have a force on the wall from the hinge. I'm going to call it force hinge x, pushing that way because that rod is being pushed into the wall, so the wall is pushing back. And it's also holding it up because I know without the hinge it would fall. So there's a force hinge Y. And sometimes, you know, you're like, is there really a force hinge Y? Is there really, like, maybe there isn't one. It'll come out to be zero if it's not there. Your answers will always work themselves out. So you shouldn't stress out too much about that. Now, that's what's acting on the strut. I should say we're drawing all the forces acting on the strut right now because that's the object that's in equilibrium. We have the tension here in the cable. And then we have the weight of this sign, which is 400 newtons. And we also have the weight of the strut itself, 600 newtons, acting halfway over, um, halfway, through, halfway down at center. All right, let's start with sigma fy. And, oh, and we might as well with this tension, since we know we're dealing with x and y. Let's um, look at ty and tx. And we can see here that this is also 37 degrees. Okay, so let's do sigma fx equals zero. It's an equilibrium sideways. And all that tells us is that fhx equals tx. And we can't do anything about that because we don't know either of those two things. Now let's look at sigma fy equals zero, which is gonna tell us that all the up forces equal all the down forces. So ty, plus FHY, those are the two upwards forces, equals the two downwards forces, which are 600 newtons and 400 newtons, or 1,000 newtons. That's what we get from balancing the weights with the upward forces. Again, we can't solve it. So now let's look at the sigma torque. This is what's going to be the thing that lets us get through this problem. The net torque is also zero. And like I said in the previous question, you always want to choose your coordinate axis to be such that it eliminates a force that you don't know. So for me, I'm going to put the coordinate axis right here at the location of that mysterious hinge force, because I know even though it's in my other equations, it's going to drop out of the torque equations because force is applied at the axis of rotation, supply no torque. Okay, so let's go. Let's do it. Let's look at all the clockwise torques. Which ones are the clockwise torques? I'm going to actually highlight the clockwise torques in yellow. Clockwise torques around that point are going to be this weight here and this weight here counterclockwise torques I'll highlight in blue, and the only one doing a counterclockwise torque is the y component of the tension. 
Things that don't supply a torque are the hinge forces and also the X component of the tension because it acts along the rod. And so it's not going to cause a rotation. It's just compressing it into the wall, but it's not going to cause a rotation. Remember, the, to, in order to supply a torque, just draw this up here. You have your radius and your force, and they must be perpendicular to one another. You need a force, um, oops, a force perpendicular. That's a horrible picture but you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, so let's go. So net torque is zero. So um, let's do the clockwise torques first. So 600 newtons, that's our force. And that's two meters from the pivot point over here. Two meters. Suddenly I am having a hard time writing. Here we go, times two meters. Um, plus uh, the other force uh, from the weight, which is 400 newtons times the full four meters. And note I'm not using any angles because these are all perpendicular, so I don't need to do any angles. They're already doing the full torque. And then the only counterclockwise torque is going to be from the TY because the TX supplies no torque. TY, and again, that's supplied 4 meters from the axis of rotation. And so let's see, what does this get us? 600 times 2 is 1,200 newton meters plus 400 times four is 1600 Newton meters equals four meters times TY. So this is uh, 2800 Newton meters equals four meters times TY. That tells us that TY is 700 Newtons. That's great. So we found that. Then we can come up here. Um, if I know that TY is 700 Newtons, I can use trig to get T and Tx pretty simply. Um, I could just do the tangent. So let me do that. Tan theta equals uh, Ty, which is 700 Newtons, over Tx. That tells me that Tx is equal to 700 over tan 37, which is 929 newtons, which is also going to be the x component of the hinge force. So I've got my tx, I've got my ty, I can do the Pythagorean theorem tx squared plus ty squared, which I'm going to do right now. So if I do the Pythagorean theorem, take the square root, I get 1163. So my total tension, which I'll write up here, equals um, 1,163 newtons. So I've solved for that. Now I know FHX equals TX from up here. So 929 newtons. And then I could come over here and I know that uh, 700 newtons plus FHY is 1,000 newtons. That's going to tell me that FHY is 300 newtons. And then I can do my Pythagorean theorem there as well. So I can do um, 929 squared plus 300 squared, second square root, second answer. I get uh, 976 for the hinge force in total. Now, the last thing that's somewhat interesting is um, we can get the angle of the hinge force if we wanted to by using the tangent, get the angle of the two. So if I have my FHX and my FHY, I can get my, I have my total F and I can get my theta. Just to show you that it's like some random angle, that's gonna be the inverse tan of FHY, which is 300 Newtons, divided by FHX, which is 929 and I get about 18 degrees. So the theta for the hinge force is 18 degrees. And so that's different than 37, and it's just the number that it comes out to be. So the hinge force is, I should write that total force, is 976 at 18 degrees. Okay, and that's the hanging sign problem.